Hi, it's Iron Man. The easy solution to discuss Rolls theorem. I'm gonna go through a video on it because uh, it's used in proving the mean value theorem, which is a really important theorem in all of calculus. Basically, Rolls theorem is named after uh, Michael Roll. Yeah, he's a, math a French mathematician, so he published this in uh, 1691. So, uh, anyways, uh, the function um, the Rolls theorem is it's stated as follows. So, if you have function y equals f of x, and the following conditions are true, say so one, f is continuous on the closed interval a and b. What this just means is that a and b are included. So if you have a function, let's say like this, uh, you so it's between these two. And then uh, if it's an open interval, this is, let's say, closed. Vs open, this one is, uh, you, you don't include the, the ones at the end, so they don't have to be true. But this one, uh, they have to be both valid here. So, and then also if, uh, if so the second condition if, is if f is yeah, f is differentiable uh, on the open interval and yeah, open interval a b the, yeah so this just means that everywhere is uh, you could uh, everywhere you you could take a derivative except at the ends doesn't really matter hey, for this uh, this one here and also the, th the third condition is if f of a equals f of b then if if this equals then there is a number yeah, so there's a number c in uh, inside inside the interval a and b such that such a derivative added is zero. So such that f f prime of c is equal to zero. And uh, you can see this one if you this one is plausible just by looking at it. Uh, let's by looking at a graph of several cases. Let's say you had let's say graph a if yeah, the graph just looks something like this. This is uh, x, this is y, and it's just a straight line. This is just, it's just a horizontal line. And this is, let's say, a, I oh, know this is b, and this is a. And this is a straight line, so then uh, c is every single value here is derivative of zero. This is f of, uh, well, basically f of x equals zero. So then this one is true. You can just uh, look at that one, obviously it's true. But if you look at, uh, and another graph, you have something like this. This is x, this is y. If you have something like this, parabola like that. And this is a, this is b. And as you can see, it should be, uh, this is this one right here. If this is c, then this, this value is between it, f prime is equal to zero. And also another one, another case could be like, something like this it could be something like this if these are equal b because remember this is uh, f of a, f of b and this is f of a they should equal the same then as you can see here there's actually two uh, two areas where there's uh, the derivative of zero and this is let's just call this C two. This is C one, and this is f prime of C one should be equal to zero. And then uh, the last one is if you have a downward parabola like this. This is x. This is y. So as you can see, it, it should be all true. This again, this is a. This is b, and this is uh, this value c, and here f of c is equal to zero. So as you can see, it should be true, and then if you want to, and the proof for these, basically in my other video I showed local maximum and local minimums. Uh, if you have a function like this one, this one is basically a local max, and a local max has to have a f prime is equal to zero. So this one is a local max, and this one has both local max and min, and, and similarly this is local min. So a local min or max, this is true if it's continuous and differentiable. And uh, to illustrate this, uh, and one example is just if you throw a ball in the air. Let's just say if you're if you're standing here, or just draw this. This is uh, the guy. Here. Let's say you you kick the ball or throw a ball in the air. It's gonna it's gonna look something like this, and it's gonna land back down. So then, uh, the highest point. This is the highest point is when the velocity becomes zero highest at let's say velocity equals zero and velocity is just uh, just equals to a derivative of distance so distance 
prime and whatnot. So as you can see, this one is, and it lands back to the same place. If this is, let's say this is A, this is B, and this is, these heights are the the same place. So as you can see, this is just a, a clear, this is just a simple illustration of Rolle's theorem. But uh, here's another example you could use it as well. Okay, so here's an example here. Uh, let's say we want to prove x cubed plus x minus one equals zero has only one real root. Well, at this one we could use Rolle's theorem, but first we gotta just, just uh, take a step back. Let's just let let f of x equal this function uh, x cubed plus x minus one. Now, if we plug in, let's say f of zero, uh, if we plug this inside, we're gonna get well zero plus zero and negative one, so we're gonna get negative one, and this one is less than zero. So this is the root we gotta find out when it equals zero. But then if we plug in f of one here. Yeah, so f of 1 is equal to, well, uh, 1 plus 1, that's 2 minus 1, this is just equal to 1, and this is greater than 0. And then by the intermediate uh, value theorem, or just uh, look at it through common sense, um, it, this, is a polynomial, this is a polynomial and this is continuous. If you were to graph it, there's no breaks in it or whatnot. Yeah, so by looking at, let's say, the graph of this, uh, this thing, I'm not sure how the graph looks like, but it's continuous, so then it would look something like this. If you, have, if you were to plot these two points here, f of 0 is negative 1. This is negative 1. That's 0. f of 1 is equal to 1. So here, let's call this 1. So this is f of 1, and this is f of uh, 0. So then if it's continuous, it's going to look something like this, and then uh, there's going to be a value equal to zero here. So then we'll have at least the root. And this is basically the intermediate value theorem. So it will have a root, but then how do we prove that it only has one root and not, uh, it doesn't go well, it doesn't go like something like this. And this is uh, one, here this is uh, negative one here. So how do we prove that it's not something like this that has uh, multiple roots or versus one root here? Well, we could use uh, Rolle's theorem here because we know this is continuous and it's also um, differentiable. It's just all polynomials are. So then, applying Rolle's theorem, we know that we know that if it has if it has more than one root, then let's say let's say it has two roots. Let's say it has uh, two roots. Well, let's just say it has two roots. If this is true, then you're going to need to have something like f of a is equal to 0, and this is also equal to f of b. These are the two roots here. So if this is true, then by Rolle's theorem, by Rolle's theorem, there is a number between these two. There's a number c between a and b. This is a be such that f prime of c is equal to zero. This is just the Rolle's theorem where we just showed above. Then if we just take derivative of this, this one is going to be the derivative of it is f of x is equal to well three x squared. What is this? Uh, plus one. But as you can see from here, this one, uh, if you put a negative number here, it's going to be positive. So this one's always going to be greater than, yeah, this is always going to be greater than 0. Because the lowest value, if you put a 0, it's a 1. So it's greater than 0, and then, so we, this is not true. So then Rolle's theorem does not apply. And because it doesn't apply, then there's only one real root. There's only one real root here. And then uh, you get, but then there's other roots that are uh, in the imaginary realm and whatnot. But here we, we didn't actually find out what the root is, but that's not what Rolle's theorem is for. So Rolle's theorem doesn't actually prove it. Uh, it. It's an existence theorem. I'll just, existence theorem. And all it, all it does is say a number exists, but it doesn't, doesn't say how to get the number. Yeah, so I just wrote it down here. It says uh, a number with some conditions... Uh, exists in this case f prime of c is zero but it doesn't say how to get that number and from here since we can't get that number we know that there's no roots and th there's no multiple roots there's only one real root see this is, this is a real this imaginary is something else 
So yeah, that's uh, you could use rules theorem. I'll show in the next video how to prove mean value theorem using it. And this one is, it's pretty obvious. Just there's gonna be local max, local mins, f prime of c is zero. And this one's k. This one's just a constant. It's, it's gonna be zero everywhere. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned and um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.